Hi to all, how's it going? I would like to start this video with some great news. As you know, there is the ongoing uh, effort Real Thunder is making to merge his toponaming patches into the FreeCAD main branch. The good news is that recently, relative to the um, time of this recording, a pull request was made uh, and now, uh, now the ball is in the court of FreeCAD uh, core developers. This is a very complex code merge, uh, the first one of several modifying 99 uh, source files. So with that being said, uh, let's try to support everyone involved uh, to make this, uh, this thing happen. It, uh, it will take uh, more than donating fin financially to help uh, these efforts, but uh, nevertheless uh, those uh, donations help. Also, as a side note, um, while uh, recording the second part of uh, this tutorial, I realized uh, that I will not be able to freely share my model because of the, of the imported uh, step file uh, of the Raspberry Pi. So I decided to, to make my own. You will find links in the video description for the GitHub repository. Uh, where you can do download the final model or if you would like uh, the steps um, representing the ending of uh, every uh, part of the tutorial. So let's start with a quick explanation and demonstration of the tools that I will uh, use du during this tutorial. The first one is called Extrude and it has the ability to extrude vertices and edges other than faces and sketches. This is a tool um, designed to work with uh, surfaces different from uh, volumes and it will be really helpful as a cutting tool um, further in the video. As you can see, we can select uh, this previously made sketch and uh, make an extrusion. I can make an extrusion for 100 millimeters and I want it to be symmetric to plane. Notice how um, the extrusion is kind of a separate uh, entity from the first feature, uh, from the first pad feature of our body. And this is uh, where we will use the second tool um, useful for the purpose of this tutorial. And this, this is the split tool. So select uh, the extrusion, click the split tool, and you will see that the, the split tool uses the extrusion as a cutting plane for the operation. The splits can be enabled or disabled independently. For our splits uh, to work correctly, we need to take care that uh, the um, splitting plane is, um, is completely intersecting the volume uh, of the original pad. I will, I will uh, demonstrate uh, when it fails, so if we go in our extrusion and we change it uh, from symmetric to plane to a simple extrusion and we click OK, you see that we are left with only one split. So I guess uh, this tool can be useful to, to split faces, but uh, you will not have uh, two, two separate uh, entities uh, where the splitting plane intersects uh, our body. Another tool that we will uh, use is the green uh, subshade binder. This nifty little tool has some uh, really interesting properties. Let's demonstrate some of them right now. So, if we hide our pad and select two vertices from these two sketches that I previously made, press the green subshade binder and you will see that it creates um, an edge between the two vertices. The green subshade binder will detect if it uh, can create uh, an edge or a face from the selected um, geometry and uh, it will do it if the make face uh, property is set to true. This property is really useful to create um, arbitrary geometry for the shade binders. So let's go ahead and se select other two vertices and create another edge between the two. Let's select these four edges and create a shape binder. If the make face property is set to true, the shape binder will create a face. And uh, if we need only the edges, just uh, change the property to, fa to false. We can go ahead and create our geometry for the shape uh, shape binders and you 
will see that this technique uh, becomes uh, really handy when the when arbitrary geometry is useful for separation planes. Okay, so we have a bunch of uh, shape binders that uh, create our uh, separation plane. At this point, we can select our faces and create another shape binder based on this selection. At this point, it is important that uh, the fuse property is set to true. This property will fuse the geometry of the last uh, shape binder, make, uh, making so that uh, the split uh, won't fail when uh, we will try to do it. So with the theory out of the way, let's go ahead and construct the separation plane for our two halves of our pi case. We need to make sure that the pi case part is the active uh, part. We will switch to the part design workbench and let's create a new body. This new body will be named separation plane. And in order to have a correct height of our separation plane in respect to the pie case, we need to import some geometry from uh, our Raspberry Pi 2 part. So let's hide the case. Let's expand the tree view for the Raspberry Pi 2 part and we will select the main board and because I want my separation uh, plane to pass right through the middle of the, the USB port I will select perhaps this face also and we will create a new green subshape binder okay so let's hide the board and although this is not really a good practice to sketch directly on faces, we will uh, put to test the new topo naming algorithm. And I will go ahead to do the, just that only because I want to speed things up a, a little bit. So let's select this face on our newly created um, binder. We will create a new sketch and I need to import some external geometry. Select the, the external geometry tool. I need this edge here and this edge here. Let's switch perpendicular to our sketch face. Unhide the master case. And just to explain, I want my separation plane to avoid the ports on the board and then to pass right through the middle of the USB port. So let's start sketching. Escape to dismiss the polyline tool. And now we want to start constraining our sketch. I need this line to be horizontal and one important thing that we need to do if it is not like this already like in here i need to make the arcs tangent uh, to the the ascent uh, geometry to have a nice uh, smooth uh, transition between the curves uh, on our separation plane so select this arc and this line here for and press t on your uh, keyboard for a ten tangent constraint okay to confirm and we will verify that this is the case while constraining uh, our sketch I need this arc and this arc to be tangent this one to be vertical let's give this line a horizontal dimension of 10 millimeters I want these arcs here to be all equal together with this one so press E on your keyboard for an equality constraint and I want to give it a radius so shift R on your keyboards on your keyboard for for two millimeter radius. I want this line here to be vertical dimension of three millimeters. This arc here and this arc here will be equal and I want a radius of four millimeters. To have a nice transition here, I will make the center of the arc with this vertex horizontal. 
and I want this line here to have a horizontal dimension of perhaps 48 millimeters and again I want the center of the arc of this vertex to be horizontal. I want this line to be horizontal 10 millimeters and of course I need this one to have a dimension also of 12 millimeters because I want my separation line to pass right through the middle of the USB port I have this imported line here so I will select this vertex here this one here and the center one as on your keyboard for a symmetric constraint I, I guess I will give this arc a radius of 6 millimeters to have it a little bit taller I need this line here and this line here to be a cons construction geometry and you will see why in just a minute let's close the sketch and let's do the other side I will hide my master case for just a second select this face here on our shape binder let's create a new sketch and in this uh, new sketch I need to import some external geometry that is the outline of the sketch on the other side so I need this arc here and this arc here and I want to import also this uh, vertex here so at the moment uh, just follow along and everything will fall into place in just one second Let's start creating the geometry for the separation plane on the other side of our case. And this vertex here. Let's close our sketch. And create the actual separation geometry. So select the first sketch. Use the extrude vertex or edge tool. I want perhaps 15 millimeters as a dimension because remember that we need our separation plane to fully intersect the, the object that we want to cut. Hit OK and do the same thing with the other sketch. So extrude 15 millimeters. OK. Hide the master case. And this is what we have so far. At this point we still need to create the planes that will separate the front and the back of our case. To do this we will create a sketch with the help of datum planes. To make sure uh, that um, the geometry is contiguous we will select this edge here and this edge here. We will create a datum plane and we will select inertia to free as a, a attachment uh, mode. Notice uh, how the plane is rotated in the 3D view, so we need it rotated around the y-axis by 90 degrees and this way we've uh, created a datum plane that uh, is flushed with these two edges here. Click OK. Let's select our newly created datum plane and create a sketch on it. We will hide it so it won't it won't get uh, in the way of our sketch. Let's uh, choose wireframe and we will import some external geometry. I need this vertex here and this vertex here also as an external geometry. Let's move to the sketch plane and I want to draw a line between these two vertexes here. So just to make sure select the two see on your keyboard for a coincident constraint I want the same thing here and this will give us a fully constrained sketch close the sketch select it and we will extrude it for 15 millimeters but of course I want it to be reversed okay we will do the same thing uh, in the back of our case so select this edge here this edge here create a new datum plane I want to have an attachment mode of inertia to free and I want to rotate it around the y-axis by 90 degrees hit ok select the datum plane and create a new sketch let's hide our datum plane I will import the two vertices 1 and 2 and create the line that connects uh, them. 
let's close our sketch and as before we need to extrude it for 15 millimeters okay so we finally managed to create our relatively complex uh, separation geometry but in order to use it we need to make one more step we need to unite all the pieces in uh, one single object to do this we will select our extrusions one two three and four and we will create a shape binder based on uh, these uh, geometries let's hide our the rest of our geometry and by selecting our newly cr created binder we need to make sure that the fuse property is set to true and the make face property is also set to true by unhiding our master case geometry we can visually check if our separation plane does what it is uh, supposed to do and to be honest i don't like how it ends here in the back uh, of my case i will go ahead and modify the sketch that drives this uh, geometry so let's just reopen it and i think that here we can have a close also if we check the front uh, of our case we see that uh, the separation plane doesn't quite uh, cut through all the geometry so we need to make uh, this extrusion longer so select our extrusion and uh, i don't know why this is 10 millimeters but it is supposed to be 15 millimeters so let's see it seems a lot better and notice how our shape binder follows the changes made uh, in the geometry that precedes it so far we have created the outline of our cutout but in order to cut our um, case geometry we need to make sure that uh, the active body is actually the master case so we will toggle the master case and as an active body expand the separation plane select our last binder and we will use it as a cutout tool click on the split, the split uh, feature tool and voila we have our split with the two halves that can be activated or the, the, the activated or deactivated independently at this point we can hide our separation plane geometry and verify that the separation line goes uh, where we wanted to okay so at this point i think that a quick uh, recap is necessary to fully understand uh, what we have done here we have created a new body called separation plane that we've uh, used as a proxy for creating the geometry necessary as a cutting plane for our master case this geometry needs to be a surface geometry of course we could have used uh, some volume geometry but uh, the surfaces work uh, really well here we've used uh, various tools to achieve uh, the desired shape and we've created a binder that unifies the various pieces uh, bits and pieces of geometry that uh, create our separation plane at this point because we wanted to cut the master case we activated this body in order to execute the cutting operation on the master case geometry with the master case geometry active we've selected the tool that uh, cuts uh, which is the the binder and using the split tool we have splitted our master case geometry in the two halves these two halves can be activated or deactivated independently by using the eye icon in the tree view hoping that this was not uh, highly confusing uh, we conclude this the second part of the tutorial and in the third part uh, we will uh, add all the details to our pie case to make it uh, look like a professional product thank you very much to, uh, for staying till the end and i'll see you in the next one